Hey, Final Fantasy fans. Just want to give you a heads up that because we're talking about voice acting in this episode, we will be showing a number of clips from all the mainline Final Fantasy games, including some spoilers. Check out the episode description to see exact timestamps for each spoiler if you prefer to skip those parts. And with that in mind, welcome to the show. For some reason, like the combination of the character, the voice, and what was going on, it was just like, I hate this dude (laughs) kind of thing. (laughs) That's interesting because, okay, yes, his performance is super different than all the other performances. Welcome to the Final Fantasy Files, where we discuss all things Final Fantasy from Tidus to Noctis to Clive. My name is Jolie Hales. And I'm Ernest DeLeon. And I am super excited about today's topic, which is voice acting. Ernest, aren't you so excited about today's topic? I'm super excited. And this is going to be a spoiler light episode. (gasps) Because there's not much to spoil when it comes to this. That is a good point. I didn't even think about it. I'm sure we'll find a way to spoil it, though. So, so warning. We should warn people anyway. <laughs> right. And for those who don't know, which is probably most of you, I should start by explaining. So the reason I'm so excited about this particular topic is because I'm actually a filmmaker by trade. I got my master's degree in film directing in Southern California, and then I've worked with actors in various degrees for a couple of decades now. And... Through all of that, I really have developed a true respect for those who have really mastered the acting craft. And I'm not talking about like celebrities. I honestly don't really care about celebrities. I don't care who's famous, who's influential or whatever. I care about the craft, right? I care about the talent and I love watching a good acting performance. I have a little bit of acting in my own background on stage, but I am nothing compared to some of the incredible actors who are out there. And and of course, I should also say that the flip side is that bad acting also really jumps out at me, right? Even though I really do try to consciously forgive it and then like move on when I see bad acting or when I hear bad voice acting. But for me, because of my background, bad acting sticks out like, I don't know, like a piece of broccoli in somebody's teeth. (laughs) Right. As much as I would like to, I just can't ignore it. But we're talking about great acting here, though, like Velocipaster and Lava (laughs) Lantula and those kind of movies. Yeah, we should also... Why don't you tell a little bit about your background with film, Ernest? (laughs) So so my background in film is... I have no background in film. (laughs) No, you have a background in watching film. You've probably seen more movies than me. But I have an extensive background in watching film. That's true. So, like, I'm one of those kind of walking encyclopedias of old movies. I've watched so many of them. Like, I like to quote movie scenes. Kind of like Bumblebee does in Transformers, even though I hate Michael Bay. (laughs) But a similar thing. But I especially love really bad movies. Like, like I mentioned, these B movies that had like maybe 25 grand, 100 grand of budget. And that's, they had to do the entire thing, including production and post-production all on that one budget. Those are my favorite ones. Because those are the ones where like, I can feel the passion of the director. That's true. They had to do everything on such a shoestring. And for the most part, they don't take themselves seriously. I know there are some that do, but like they, they know what they're putting out there is. <laughs> yeah, like Sharknado's creators weren't like, this is going to be an Oscar winner. It's not like a, you know, Michael Bay. Right. That's a bad example. Who has the budget and still makes crap. <laughs> <laughs> still makes bad movies. <laughs> yeah. But we're like, it's not like something that's going to insult, you know, Steven Spielberg, that he would be insulted by making a movie like that, right? Right. This is a different caliber. So that's my entire qualification set, if you want to call it, for judging <laughs> acting and voice acting. So, top notch. But I think it's reasonable. And you've seen a lot more movies than I think a lot of people have because you watch anything. <laughs> like, I can't sit through those movies. <laughs> I, <laughs> I watch anything. I mean, that's true. But, like, most of the people in the world don't know that there's a movie called Lava Lantula or Velocipaster, which... That's true. I've seen the trailer because of you. Or Rubber. Right, or Rubber, which is about a tire that literally kills people, like attacks people. It's right. like a murderous tire. Right. And then Velocipaster is just what it sounds like. It's a pastor who turns into a velociraptor. Where do they come up with these ideas? It's great. These are definitely movies that somebody thought of the name first and the script came second, you know? For sure. Yeah. 
For sure. But there's definitely some cringy acting in uh, those B-level movies. Some of it, I think, is on purpose. Oh, it's definitely on purpose. <laughs> I really think that, like, some good actors, that they'll land for those roles are like, oh, yes, I'm going to suck because it's going to be great, you know? And it oh, yeah. kind of makes it awesome, right? And the director doesn't care how many takes they do. They probably just do, like, one, maybe two, and they doesn't matter if they're any good. Yeah, because they're shooting it on a GoPro or an iPhone, right? right? Like, it's <laughs> their, bu- their budget is not, you know... <laughs> they're shooting they're on not an shooting iPhone. The, they're not renting a camera and rig for 30 grand right. a day. They're not shooting on right. actual film and, and anything right. these days. Yeah. yeah. So now in the, in the world of gaming, there's been some great voice acting, but then there's, I think, the equivalent of that uh, B-level movie acting as well in a lot of games over history. I think, unfortunately, in the world of gaming, we've sat through a lot of crappy voice acting as it has evolved. And I would say that in the world of Final Fantasy, it's also been quite hit and miss. I would say some of the hits are total aces. They're awesome. And some of the misses, I think, are so cringy that they hurt my soul. (laughs) And before we get into where Final Fantasy 16 and then all the other Final Fantasies that have voice acting in them, before we get into where they all fall in that spectrum from awesome to cringy, I do need to throw down some truths. I need to throw down some truths. Okay. So if you're not familiar with performing arts acting and maybe you come from a totally different world like engineering, right? Mm-hmm. Or cybersecurity or... <laughs> Who would that be? Who does that kind of boring work? <laughs> Just a bunch of weirdos. <laughs> so, okay, here are the truths I need to throw down. So I will say that Acting, which includes voice acting, it's not just about voice inflection, right? It's not about how you, quote, deliver a line. In fact, if an actor is thinking about how they should deliver a line or how they should sound when they actually say a line, then they're likely going to deliver it very poorly. Instead, an actor who is good should really truly put themselves so deeply into their character's shoes in that moment that they should actually authentically and truly be feeling what that character would authentically feel in the circumstances of that scene. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And sometimes that actor gets trapped in that scenario. Oh, yeah. And it creates mental issues. Like the Joker or Jim Carrey. That, <laughs> like, Jim Carrey, but I'm thinking of Heath Ledger, yeah, right? Heath Ledger. They get trapped in that yep. and they can't come back out. So you know that that delivery was authentic. Yep. Unfortunately, the cost was was pretty massive. The ultimate price. And that's that's absolutely true though because it's not that he's just pretending to be evil. Heath Ledger wasn't an evil person, but he had to get into the evil mindset of the Joker in a true authentic way for a long period of time. And this is not just while they're on set like they have to do the homework while they're back at home when they're going over their script and memorizing their lines. They have to think about the backstory, they have to think about the motivations and then they have to feel those motivations which unfortunately was really rough for Heath Ledger. It's a perfect example of that. I think that a lot of people fail to recognize that when a really good actor is, let's say, crying tears of sadness, per se, as an example, I think a lot of people fail to recognize that when they're crying those tears of sadness, if it's a good performance, if it's a good actor, it's because they're authentically sad. They're not just thinking, I need to cry here, right? Because if you think, I need to cry here, and then you try to cry, you're going to look so fake and so bad, it's it's not going to work at all, right? So in order to cry, you have to really get yourself into that place. And I've had to direct actors where I have to walk them to a dark and sad place before a scene where they have to cry so that it can be a true acting performance. And it's hard to do, but that's another thing about acting, though, and actors. They're a unique breed because they like doing that. It's very therapeutic for them. <laughs> Therapeutic's a word for it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Which is why actors are a little bit different of a breed. Actors will tell you this, right? But I just want to emphasize that, like, thinking, oh, I need to cry is the fastest way to fake tears that don't work at all on screen. So that's like a really quick 101 on acting. So since this is an episode about voice acting, I just wanted to make a personal call out to one of my favorite voice actors of all time who recently passed away. Oh no. This year, Lance Reddick. A lot of you may know him if you're into video games. Probably the most famous role he had was Zavala in Destiny 2. Oh. Um, and if you're not familiar with video games, you might recognize him from the Netflix series Resident Evil where he played Albert Wesker which is one of the main characters in the series. And he was also a major recurring character in The Wire. 
Did he pass away unexpectedly? I mean, unfortunately, he did pass away unexpectedly. They said it was due to a heart defect. Oh. I'm a huge fan of him, of all of his work, especially in Destiny 2. That is one of my favorite games. So shout out to Lance Reddick. We'll remember you forever because he was, is the legend. And best wishes to his loved ones he left behind. Yep. So that said, let's go through the history of Final Fantasy voice acting, which actually didn't start until Final Fantasy... Final Fantasy X was the first voice acted mainline Final Fantasy series. That is true. And that was all the way back in 2001. All right, boys, what are we going to do? Win! So it's crazy. We've had 22 years of voice acting in Final Fantasy. So I would say that it's still a relatively new art, but it's not new enough at this point that there's a good excuse for bad voice acting. I think at this point, right. it should just be good. <laughs> but we're gonna go through each Final Fantasy. We're gonna start with the most recent addition to the series, Final Fantasy 16. And we're going to talk about the different voice acting performers and which ones were awesome and which performances may have left a little bit to be desired for some of us. And Ernest, before I give my very strongly opinionated take, what were your thoughts on the voice acting of our first game that we're going to talk about, Final Fantasy 16? So yeah, obviously I think it was the best voice acting of any of them, right? But that should be the case, right? It's the latest. You're the mm -hmm. most recent game. Right. You should have figured it out by now. So they did. Yep. Excellent voice acting. I was quite impressed looking at the credits at the end, seeing all of the localizations and the different voice actors they used oh. to get it across. I was like blown away because normally you might get English and Japanese, but there were so many localizations for this voice acting as well. So they really put budget into it. So I was like, all right, this is great. They all did a great job. I think there were some that were obviously weaker than others, but I think one of the comments I made to you was, I felt like I wanted more in terms of the emotion from the voice actors. Uh -huh. I don't know why. I just felt like I just wanted more. I, I don't know how to describe it okay. other than that. Like some of it just felt kind of, maybe not monotone is not the right word, but I just wanted more like emphasis and emotion on some of these things. Sure. Not all of it, because, you know, we don't go around in everyday life sounding super excited and emotional, right? Yeah. Were there any particular characters? That you wanted more from? It wasn't even specific characters. It was just like maybe certain scenes where something didn't quite fit right. Like it seemed like they would have had a stronger emotional response to whatever it was. And it's hard for me to like go back and think about which specific ones they are now. Mm -hmm. But that was my only critique of it that I wanted more in certain areas. And I remember you saying, well, no, 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 that's if they overdo it, that's not like good that's well if they like force emphasis right, if they force or it, emotion. So, yeah but i did enjoy it and i obviously have my favorite and then my i wouldn't say least favorite that's the wrong way to look at it. i don't think anybody was terrible but i did have some that were like you know weaker than others if you want to call it that okay who are your top three voice actors from 16 so obviously my favorite was uncle byron you love uncle byron phoenix's fiery fundament have you no normal enemies? Oh, he's actually my second favorite, but he was great. I loved Uncle Byron. I don't know why. I think he felt like the most natural to me. Really? He knew who he was, and he was totally comfortable with it. Yeah. And his voice just matched that. Like, he didn't care what anybody thought about him. He was going to do what he wanted. He was going to say what he wanted. <laughs> and I laughed most of the time when he was talking. Take care, Clive. I have many more tales of your father's exploits to share. And I cannot very well do that if you're dead again. But he was actually my second favorite. Believe it or not, my favorite was actually Ultima. Oh, interesting. Any reasons why? I loved Ultima and he had to play a god, right? So how do you play a god that's thousands of years or tens of thousands of years old who is just, let's just say bored? Right? You're all powerful, you're all knowing, and you're the most elite of the elitist. How do you play that? Right? And so, like, his very almost monotone and metered voice, as if he was bored and he knew this was going to be the outcome for 10,000 years. Yeah. He wasn't surprised. He wasn't sad. He wasn't happy. He was just like, it is what it is. Yeah. And the phoenix. His trespass should not have been possible. All the way up until the end when he realized he wasn't as powerful as he thought he was. Then we actually saw his like entire demeanor shift. And he got really emotional. Into a cornered animal. The world you seek is but a fantasy. 
<sighs> but like think about it everything up in that up until that point was just so monotone metered and precise your soul is tainted with worthless human will yet your thirst for power remains undiminished he just nailed it yeah it, that's a really good evaluation of the Ultima actor. I didn't give it much thought, and now that you mention it, I think you're totally right. The Ultima actor is fantastic. He's very good. Never at one point was I taken out of the game, which means that he did his job well. Right. Right, because I never thought, oh, that line. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's why I thought that character was probably the best actor in the game. That's a really interesting take. I'm so glad you mentioned that. As you were talking, I looked up the actor. His name is Harry Lloyd. He was in Xenoblade Chronicles 3, and he was the voice of Z. He's also in Brave New World. This guy's got a long list of credits. So he's a legit actor. He's in movies, The Theory of Everything. Oh, yeah. Okay, so he's so... He's an American dad. I don't recognize him, but... Obviously, like he played a, a good part in that movie, what bit part he did have, yeah. right? Because it's not like he was a main character. Oh, yeah, he's in Jane Eyre. He's in five episodes of Game of Thrones. Okay, so he's got a catalog. The Iron Lady, great. So this is a legitimate actor. And I wouldn't even say voice actor, quote unquote, because to be honest with you, nowadays, voice acting is acting. Like, oh, yeah. it's not just voiceover. It's not like cartoons on Saturday mornings that they just need to lend some little mousy voice right. to. It's like legitimate acting at this point. So this is a good example of an actor, Harry Lloyd, who plays Ultima. He's a great example of somebody who has a solid list of credits, both on screen and as a voice actor. So looks like uh, you called it. He's legit. The man is talented. I, I give it to him. Hats off to him. Talented list. And then I do have a comment about my worst. So I put a note here. I can't even remember his name, but it's the guy that was timid and always afraid that he was going to screw up. He's one of the side quest guys inside of the hideaway. Half the time, Clive was trying to figure out what he needed for a supply. And the other half, he was trying to pep talk this guy. I, I don't remember his name. I just, I, I remember like his voice would like waver and like almost crack when he was talking because he was like timid and but, always scared of stuff. Okay. I can't remember who you're talking about. So I can't say whether or not I liked the performance just based off of my memory. But when he was talking timidly, did he sound like a person would talk in real life? Like, would they? You know, did he feel authentic? I mean, he was he was he was kind of he was kind of talking like this with his voice kind of wavering while he was talking, <laughs> and like it was that kind of thing. And I was like, okay, and you I didn't can't. buy it. You didn't buy it. I not at all. Okay, not at all. That's like, fair. So again, I not only that I hated his performance, right. I didn't think it was like the worst in terms of like he shouldn't have a job type of right. thing. But it was just <laughs> that's good. Not only was it unbelievable, but it was just like annoying. Maybe it's just because I was annoyed and I didn't like it because I was annoyed. And that could be the case. I, I get He could be good and authentic, but like just be a really annoying voice. Right. Like there's plenty of those. It, it, it wasn't an annoying voice. It, it wasn't like Stewart from Saturday Night Live. It wasn't like <laughs> that. It was, but it was sort of like that intonation, right? Just like, I felt like I wanted to slap this kid and be like, get yourself together, man. Like, <laughs> You're a grown man. You can't, you know, that's so maybe I'm making the mistake of judging like, like character judgments, though, not actor. Right. So maybe he actually did a great job from a pure voice acting perspective. Yeah. But for some reason, like the combination of the character, the voice and what was going on, it was just like, I hate this dude <laughs> <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> that's the impression I got from this voice acting. So that is a fair take. I'm going to definitely have to look this guy up. Where was he? Look, did you say hideaway or was he, he like was in the hideaway? He kept asking for like these specific supplies and then Clive would go out to get them and then bring them back. Oh, was he the? was he like an engineer in the bottom? He was either an engineer or he was in the apothecary. I can't remember which one it was. No, I know who you're talking about. If he's the guy, I think think that you're thinking of who asks you to get like pieces that ended up at one point it expanded your ability to carry more potions right is it that guy i think so i think yeah, it was okay. that guy that's interesting because okay yes his performance is super different than all the other performances i, I, I saw a billet on the hump board for one just the other day would have gone myself but well fighting dirty great balls of flame isn't exactly my forte you, on the other hand. With him, I had similar thoughts. I'm like, dude, is this guy just like, what is the deal with this guy? Like, does he suck compared to the others? That is the spirit. You will love it. I promise. The conclusion I drew is that the actor was just having a lot of fun with that character. Like, he's like, I'm going to be a goober. Ah, that's brilliant. Thanks a blimmin' 
million. And so he, he just decides to be a goober because it's not like a really authentic, like it doesn't take sure. a lot of acting chops for those particular lines. And so he's like, I'm just going to do my thing and it's going to be fun. Hey, <laughs> that's absolutely possible. I'm not saying that he's a bad voice actor. What I'm saying is that I couldn't stand you it. You didn't jive with it. Yeah. Okay. And the system of reciprocal recirculatory regenerators that, that, um, <sighs> Let's just say it gets very blimmin' hot. A heck of a lot hotter than anything Blackthorn's got in his forge, that's for certain. There's a girl like that, too, who's also an engineer, and she plays it super weird, too. Like, both the engineers just, like, right. act different. <laughs> like real life. If sea or rainwater were to enter the reactor proper, it would vaporize instantly. The forces produced would tear the ship from stern to... You can stop that. When I was actually writing the notes for this, I considered for a brief moment, like, were they trying to portray a character who was neurodivergent or something like that? And... <laughs> Maybe. And I'm making fun of somebody like no. that. So I didn't want I didn't want that to be the case. But then I was like, no, no. I don't think that's the case. No. The, the performance just like it was like nails on a chalkboard. No, that was just an actor deciding they wanted to be a goober and just having fun with it. And and once I, I hope you're right. I may be wrong, but once I came to that conclusion, I enjoyed his performance so much more because I felt like he was kind of like in on the joke with us. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, that's the whole thing, right? If your whole point of your performance there is you're throwing the game and that's the funny <laughs> part. I totally get it. That's great. That's hilarious, right? But but if it was accidental, it's not good. It suddenly becomes cringe. Yeah, when I'm in the game though playing, right? Yeah. And this happens, it like it just offset me. It I was like, what is going yeah. on here? Proper job. Well that's totally fair. <laughs> now you know what I'm talking I about. You totally know who you're talking about now. So okay. So who was your favorite? So I have a lot of thoughts as you might imagine on 16, but to start, I do have to be honest, this was truly the first Final Fantasy ever where I almost exploded with joy because the voice acting was just so dang good. Mm -hmm. And not just like good most of the time, but consistently good. Like consistently good across performances, across characters, across scenes. I was actually so pleasantly blown away. And I'm not just saying that, because I can be, obviously I can be quite the critic in this area, and I would be if it was warranted, but in this particular game, it just wasn't. Right. The main characters were all cast with fantastic actors. I mean, even the weakest side characters and the most annoying NPCs were better than some of the lead roles of past games. And that's really saying something, Yeah. right? Although some of the past games had some pretty terrible performances. But when I played 16, I was just so happy with the voice acting. I mean, aside from maybe a few throwaway lines here or there, but you really kind of had to look for those lines. The children characters were all voiced by actual children, which I love because, okay, one of my biggest pet peeves in anything, especially video games, is when like a 45-year-old woman using some cartoon voice pretends to be a child. Were you excited to marry Lady Luna Freya? Because she was really excited to marry you. I hate it. I <laughs> hate, yeah. hate it. And that almost never happened. He said he got a job doing something dangerous. There was like one or two NPCs that you'd walk past that they used a female adult to voice a child, but it was really rare. He did, mommy. I could hear him shouting from down the road. Most of the time they actually used kids and teenagers, and I'm so grateful for that. So thank you, thank you, thank you, developers, voice studios, whoever decided to choose those actors, and frankly, whoever decided to hire this particular studio and casting director, that person deserves 10 promotions, as does the English voice director, because just all around, I think you can tell I'm pretty enthusiastic about it. It was just so brilliantly cast and so brilliantly performed consistently across the board, which was awesome. Which, by the way, as I was first playing this game, I actually couldn't believe the step up that the voice acting had taken from past games in the series. And I know that you mentioned that, yes, it makes sense and it should be the best because it's the latest, right? I totally agree with that, but at the same time, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, I don't think is going to meet this caliber. I think that even though that game will be released later, it's not going to have as strong of the performances as this game did. And there's a lot of reasons for that that I'll get into here. But it made me think as I was playing this game, 
it was very obvious to me right away that the voice acting was just notches above past Final Fantasies. And it made me think that there had to be something different this time around. And it's true. In doing a little bit of research, apparently this was not only the first time that the English voice was recorded first, but facial recording devices were attached to the actors to catch their authentic and natural facial expressions in the process as well. So all of those little micro expressions that we don't even think about in our interactions with people every single day on our faces can be the difference between real connection and frankly, the uncanny valley. <laughs> and they're not just mm -hmm. movements you can easily make up as an animator, right? So you really do need to capture them from an actual person, which is I, the same thing goes for, for body acting, which is why you actually have mocap actors who do the body acting and then they just, you know, capture right. the data. And it's more efficient, but it's also more natural, which is another reason all of this combined is why it's not just voice acting to me, it's full on acting, right? We just right. make their face look maybe a little bit different in the end, but it's only going to get more impressive as developers master these technologies. And as more technology comes about, AI, I'm sure, will have a role in that more and more as it becomes less fake looking. Yeah. <laughs> and then I did want to also say that recording the English first, okay, that is a huge, huge deal for us as English speakers. They've never done that in past Final Fantasies and you can totally tell because the pacing is always off and there's always weird grunts and like mm -hmm. things that the English actors have to do just to fill holes. They're not just able to look at a script and deliver the line authentically because they have a designated amount of milliseconds where they have to fit a certain number of words in. And that's difficult for the localization team that has to write the English, but it's also super difficult for the actors who have to record it because they can't just deliver things authentically. In this game, mm -hmm. by recording the English first, it optimizes the pacing, the movements, and everything for the English audience, which I would imagine at this point is the largest audience for Final Fantasy. And that's never been optimized for in the world of Final Fantasy. And I think it was really smart also to cast from a UK studio because in my opinion british acting schools still teach the true craft of real acting as opposed to maybe some u.s based studios which are frankly i would say more sloppy when it comes to the real craft like in the u.s it's much more common for somebody to be cast because they look really good on camera but they can't deliver their lines very well and i've been guilty of that i've cast somebody like that in the past and totally regretted it. I should have just cast somebody who looked less good but delivered awesome performances. And I learned my lesson. And I hear that the actors also, even in at least some circumstances, and I really want to talk to some of the cast to find out some of these details, but I heard that they got to be in the same room with each other, which any actor will tell you makes a ginormous difference when you're actually delivering your lines because it, acting isn't just about line delivery. It's about also listening and responding and reacting to somebody else, right? Which is really hard to do when you've got like some intern or even a director who might understand the characters really well behind some like pane of glass in a studio. So whoever made these techniques priorities in recording this, props to you, a thousand promotions, it absolutely paid off and it shows. I mean, let's think about it. So child actors, right? How often are child actors just cute, but just not good? Often. I hate to say it. So just to, on the record, you're not talking about Macaulay Culkin, right? No, Macaulay Culkin's actually pretty good. Yeah, he is. Macaulay Culkin was kind of like a diamond in the rough. Same with uh, Haley Joel Osmond was another one who was pretty good. Mm -hmm. Dakota Fanning. Dakota Fanning. Yeah. And you notice when they're really good because they get all the child roles. Suddenly, all of the studios that had a script that was set aside waiting for the right child actor, they were able to pull those off the shelves and actually cast that movie because there was a, a child actor that was worthy of a certain role that was maybe a lead role, which is not always the case. It's very difficult to direct children. Well, I shouldn't say that. It's not difficult to direct children. Children are very receptive and willing to do what you ask of them, but there's just not a lot who are able to think in a very deep way and authentically portray emotion on screen. It's just, they're young, mm -hmm. you know, it's harder to do. But if you go to the child actors, even in this game, right? The child actor, I think his name was Logan Hannon, who played young Joshua. He's fantastic. It isn't fair. It should have been you. I don't have what it takes to lead our people. 
I don't have the strength, but you do. Not only does he have like the most adorable voice ever, but he gave an authentically great performance and good child actors are so hard to find. And I really think that they aced it, even with the child acting, which is like amazing. So props to Logan and the team. And then mm -hmm. as far as leads go, Clive, who is played by Ben Starr, was outstanding. I mean, the amount of range he had to show and the depths of like dark emotions he had to live in in order to do this game must have been quite the experience. She was every waking moment was spent trying to shoulder the burden that you and the Phoenix and the Duchy foisted on him. That's why I became his shield. To help bear the weight. But what did you do? You betrayed your own blood and surrendered your son to his fate! Joshua. My darling boy. I never meant to hurt him. The soldier's orders were clear. He was to be spared. Why did you survive when the only one I truly cared for died? What? Have you not looked out of the window? Joshua is here! The Phoenix lives on! He's battling Bahamut as we speak! He didn't have to think on like an evil note like Heath Ledger did with the Joker, right? That was like destructive, but I mean, Clive is around death and destruction, much of it at his own hands, for what, like 60 hours of story? <laughs> you know, like it's, mm -hmm. it's not a two hour movie either. It's like, how long did it take to record all of these lines? Like he had to be in that place, which must have taken an emotional toll on him for so long, right? How many hours uh -huh. did he have to spend in the studio, not just recording these lines, but like, living the heaviness that came with them. Joshua. I'm sorry. I failed you. Because remember, that's what good acting is. It's authentically being there. You can't just pretend to be sad. You actually have to imagine you're watching your brother being torn apart in front of you. Oh my gosh, I can't. I just can't. Take your hands off my brother! Help me. Help me, Clive. Joshua, stop it! Stop it! I swore I would protect him! Please! Stop it! And he watches his brother die in front of him twice. <laughs> Look at me. Look at me, Joshua. <laughs> Open your eyes! Open your eyes, Jimmy! <laughs> Why? Why did you do this? <laughs> Don't... <laughs> Honestly, for me, he was totally believable every step of the way. So, I mean, Ben Starr, if you ever hear any of this, bravo, my friend. Phenomenal performance. And adult Joshua, too. I think the actor who played adult Joshua is Jonathan Case, who is also completely fantastic. Oh, she understood. Understood that you decided to save the world all on your own and that you die without her power. How dare you make her choose? You knew damn well she'd never refuse you. But I will. You can't keep pushing us away, Clive. The world is ours to save, not yours. He doesn't have to show as much diversity in his performance, not as much range, because his character is pretty consistent throughout the game as compared to Clive. 
But uh-huh. he does still manage to add variety and authenticity in his performance, even though he doesn't have as much that's expected of him. His power may be absolute, but so is ours. And so will yours be. With my light in your heart, not even a god might stop us. I thought he was great. I really came to love Joshua. I don't understand why there's no, by the way, side note, there's no figurine of him that you can buy. All the other dominants have a figurine, of, but I can't get one of Joshua, which I think is kind of crazy. I think it's a, I think that they probably came out with one and they, they weren't happy with how it turned out. So they're probably redoing it. <laughs> that's what I think is happening. But I mean, that's possible, right? Yeah. I agree. Clive was awesome. Sid. I liked Sid. Sid. He's next on my list because my list for 16 is kind of long. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sid, he's so good. I mean, where can I even begin? Yeah, yeah, apparently yeah. apparently that actor, Ralph Innocent, he even had a part in the British version of The Office. So he's got a legitimate resume of TV, movie, and voice acting. Right. You know, and a lot of other big game credits as well. He's one of the larger names in the cast as a whole. And it's really no wonder why. I mean, his comedic timing and his endearing sarcasm is just not something that can be faked. And if the passage to the inner sanctum is guarded, then we embrace the moment and use it to grow and change. Because you can get an actor who can go to places of like darkness or despair or even like evil places, but it's really hard to get somebody who's got legitimately good comedic timing. You have to get basically an actor who's also a comedian. Poor sod. I'd invite him over for a cup of tea if I didn't think he'd eat the dog. You have to have an actual good wit in order to come across as a witty character. Yeah. Period. Like in in real life. So Ralph Innocent must actually be a pretty funny guy. Thank you kindly. That doesn't mean he's cracking jokes all the time like Sid, but it means that he could. He has that capability, right? Maybe that friendly like Toggle. I thought that his performance was so good that the energy of the game completely changed when the character died. So he made that big of a difference to me. And they made up for it for the most part, but it was definitely a different game post-Sid than pre-death of Sid. Oh, absolutely. Not only did it change because he was gone, but they actually changed the tone of the game at that That's point. That's true. Right? Like, and they, they literally do a time jump and everything is different. So, yeah. Right, like you went into a point of despair almost, right, right. after he died. And it wasn't just because he died. It was like, you know, the world was changing and stuff. So, totally. it was interesting that they used the lack of his voice and that humor and that delivery to set that tone after the time jump, right? Because there was now a void created in the game, too. Like, you as a player were like, man, everybody said it's like there was a funeral. You're like, oh, actually, there just was, yeah, right? I think you're totally right on that. And then another character that I wanted to call out was Jill. Thank you, Clive, for this, the flowers, but everything. It's exactly what I needed. You are my treasure. So Jill is an interesting character because I think she's one that people are less enthusiastic about as a character, and myself included. I mean, I literally texted my brother who was ahead of me in the game a third of the way through and asked him why Jill was furniture. (laughs) Like, I was not stoked on her character. I liked some things about it, but I don't think that was the actress's fault. I think it was the writing. No, I... I don't think it was her fault. I was also disappointed with her character. But like you said, I think she did fine. Mm -hmm. I think that the writers failed to... Give her personality. ...really deliver her character. I totally agree with that. And it was such a bummer because she had so much potential, right? Like, I always want to see, like, a strong female lead, especially even a romantic interest lead, right? Because a lot of times they're just dressed like hussies and they don't have a brain or... You know what I mean? They just haven't been well represented in Final Fantasy. Here we have somebody who's well put together... She knows who she is and she kicks butt, but then she doesn't really do much beyond the basics. Yeah, what I expected from her was like when she was getting ready to go into that scene where she confronted the yes. guy on the altar who had yep. obviously tortured these kids and whatever. Imran? I was expecting her to essentially become Dion at that point. How so, though? Like, like I need to atone and die or whatever? Or No, no, no. Like, Dion is a person who knows who he is, mm-hmm. and he's a rock at that point, right? He's not going to waver from his conviction. And, like, the way a person speaks or talks when they become that person 
is different from somebody who's like yes. sad or unsure. Totally. Right? So I expected her to like change, have an arc moment, kind of become a Dion, deliver the righteous indignation or whatever it is she was going to do. And from that point forward, she was now like a Dion character. I Okay. In that way that I totally agree with you. And they just did not deliver it. They didn't. And we'll have to go into a deep dive into this with a full on Jill episode, but I could not agree with you more. I feel like that was a huge missed opportunity is that that was the moment where she should have- That was the pivot. Changed. That was a huge- beat for her yeah it was right there you're right i am a monster and my soul is stained black though not by ether but by the evil of men like you who made me close my heart and drown in darkness when i should have raged against it this is my penance I will be your monster no more. Nor will I suffer you to create another. But she continues basically being the same character afterwards, which is right. furniture, right? But I will say that I paid really close attention to the voice acting, especially in my second playthrough, because I wanted to make sure that I was getting it right in what the problem with Jill was because maybe it was the voice acting, right? I didn't know 100%. And the voice actor is Susanna Fielding. And I came to the conclusion that it's actually, she's she's good. She's very good, actually. It was very yeah, well every acted. Time, you know, she was authentic. She was there. Yeah, when she delivered her lines, it was believable, right? Totally. It, it wasn't that I felt that she wasn't living up to the character. It was that the character didn't transition like they were supposed to at a certain point. Yes, and she was left with a little bit hollow of a character, yep. right? And that's unfortunate for her, but it's not her fault. Yeah, I completely agree with you. And that was the conclusion that I came to, right? Because in those moments where she does confront Imran and she kills him, she is there. She's in the moment, she's feeling the passion. Do you have any idea what you have done? I do, father. I have killed the monster and become an outlaw. May the blessing of the crystals go with you. It's just a shame that we just don't really see that again after that. That was unfortunate. But yeah, I agree. Like, she, I think she did a good job for what they gave her. I agree. Right? So props to Susanna Fielding. I thought she did great. If anybody has an issue with her, just lay off of her. It's not her fault that she's given that script. <laughs> yeah. Because it sucks when you get cast as like a a dud character in anything. And everybody loves every other part about the movie or the game, except for like the thing that you were involved in. Like I can think of a few examples where that's happened, where it's just not fair to the actor, but mm -hmm. all of the other characters were great. Literally in final fantasy 16, literally all of them are great, which I did not expect at all because we've never seen that before in a final fantasy, right? Benedicta, Dion, Hugo Kupka, Sleipnir even, Annabella, Gav, Gav was great. And such a unique voice that was so well matched for the character. And I frankly think that the actor, if you ever look up a picture of the actor, Christopher York, who plays Gav, he looks like Gav in some ways. I kind of thought the same thing like when when I was playing it I was like, oh this guy has to look like this guy like it, He does. Like the voice just fit. Yeah. Right? And I mean a lot of that happens anyway with video games because they use the same mannerisms and in this case also the micro expressions, right? So it makes sense that facial features would match. Mm -hmm. But it, it, with Gav it was particularly noticeable to me. I'll sniff out any townsfolk who haven't escaped yet and send them on the way. Be careful. Likewise, don't do anything I wouldn't do. Oh, and I thought that Goots' voice was super fun and unique. <laughs> You're letting me go with them. Oh, thanks, <laughs> none. And Barnabas or Odin, his last scenes where he laughs like psychotically. Okay, that's another thing. Mm -hmm. Laughing authentically as an actor is even harder than crying authentically. And I would say that David Menken knocked that out of the park. <laughs> that is so hard to do. That guy rocked as well. Everybody was so good. I don't know. I think Titus did it better, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll agree though. Barnabas was 
that character was pretty good. The blade must ever feed if her edge is to remain keen. Butcher. Gotcha. What care you for these worthless creatures? They are nothing. I don't know. I'm a little torn on it. Like, yes, I think he did a great job. He was a great voice actor. But that's another one where I felt like I wanted more. Really? Okay. He's very subtle in the way he plays him. Right. I wanted Kefka Palazzo out of this guy. Oh, okay. And I know that's impossible to deliver. Don't you want Kefka out of everybody, though? <laughs> Isn't that like... Only villains. Not, okay. not everybody. <laughs> Right. But so I wanted more. But again, I don't know that that's like necessarily his fault or it was just one of those where I felt like he could have pushed that character even harder and it would have been OK because this was a character that was essentially bought into a cult yeah. as like its top disciple. And when people are that deep in a cult, like their mind is just in another realm. Right. So like he could have pushed that character hard and gotten away with it. Okay, that's a fair assessment, I think. <laughs> Don't tell me you are tired, Mythos. Oh, you mentioned Uncle Byron too. And I wanted to point out an interesting <laughs> fact about yeah. Uncle Byron. So I liked Uncle Byron's voice actor. There are a couple of lines here and there that I thought were a little sing-songy, but it totally fit his character, so I thought he delivered. Oh, oh, oh Clive, my dear boy. It's really you. <laughs> you always were fond of that scene from The Saint of the Sanctuary. Never did let me play Sir Crandall. Everybody was good, remember? Like, it, it's hard to be critical because yeah. everybody was good, Uncle Byron included. He was like a jolly old rich pirate, right. kind of. <laughs> <laughs> and I loved it. Yeah, it's great. And yeah. there's an interesting fact behind him, actually. So the credits for Uncle Byron, there's actually two English voice credits for the same character because, unfortunately, the original casted actor, Stephen Critchlow, I probably am saying his last name wrong. It's spelled Critchlow. It could be like Crichlow or something like that. But mm -hmm. he passed away from cancer during production. Oh, wow. So Ewan Bailey was added to the cast. And I remember when Stephen died because he was also the voice of Count Edmund, who was one of the Lords of the Four High Houses in Heaven's Word, the expansion of Final mm -hmm. Fantasy XIV, right? Which is actually my favorite expansion in the game. Do not worry yourself on my account. Tis true that Ishgard's first thought has ever been the war effort, hence the closing of our borders, Yet, it is in troubled times most of all that men should seek allies, don't you think? I think his character was also the narrator of that whole story, if I remember correctly, and he was absolutely fantastic. With memories of the lost and dreams of redemption, with hope yet in their hearts, they came. Like, so, so good. So it makes sense that they would cast him again in this, and since Final Fantasy XIV is an MMO, when he died, people held vigils to him outside of his character's home in the game, which was actually really cool mm -hmm. to see. There would be so many characters just standing out there paying homage to him, which was great. So now that you bring that up, the same exact thing happened in Destiny 2 when Lance Reddick died. Oh, I totally believe it. His character is like a permanent post in the game. Characters just parked their in-player characters in there and had vigils yeah. for hours. And I think that's actually really yeah. cool. Like, I think people who don't play games may not understand that. But to people who play games, that's a nice tribute. You're actually dedicating your time. And that little character represents you. And to gather like that, to pay respects, I think is something. I saw the exact mm -hmm. same thing when, I don't remember his name, but the Japanese designer of the original Dark Knight kind of character. I can't remember who mm -hmm. he was when he died. There was a huge tribute to him in Final Fantasy XIV. And I think that's really cool. But there was one for Steven as well. And as far as Uncle Byron goes, though, in Final Fantasy 16, it is unclear if they used some of Steven's original acting or if it was all done by Ewan Bailey, who was the replacement actor. In listening to it, it sounded like Ewan was pretty much the voice actor for the mm -hmm. whole game, but they probably wanted to give credit out of respect to Steven as well. That's at least how I think mm -hmm. it went down. It's hard to know for sure because they do have somewhat similar voices. Clive, my boy! 
tub of cask and stoke the ovens for your favorite uncle is here. <laughs> anyway, I could pretty much go down the full list of characters and talk about how each of the performances in Final Fantasy 16 was good across the board, which is something that I couldn't say again for other Final Fantasies. Although the closest I will say that I could come to the best voice acting would be Final Fantasy XIV after they kicked out the Realm Reborn actors and replaced them with the British studio actors, which was a night and day difference. And it's actually the same voice acting studio they used for 16, which explains why both are really good. Mm -hmm. So, but let's go to previous games before Final Fantasy 16. Let's start with Final Fantasy VII Remake. Ernest, did you play Remake all the way through yet? You haven't finished it, right? No, not at all. As a matter of fact, I don't even know how far I got. I'm going to guess about a third to a half. Okay. Any memories on the voice acting? Uh, hardly any. I enjoyed Barrett's character. Totally agree. A lot. He's amazing. Marlene. 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 Witch! Jesse! God damn it! God damn you! God damn you all! Molly. If you've ever been around like that ex-military kind of rough individual, that's definitely the vibe they give off. Yep. Right? And so like Barrett definitely gave off that vibe. You can feel the military in his voice, I guess is the like his command presence yeah. when he's speaking. So I enjoyed that. Hey guys, um, you know, these fans are really loud and you chickening out? Hell no! Well, I'm just worried that your pony ass is gonna get blown off the side and shit. You know, Cloud was okay, and I don't know if that's because the voice actor was trying to portray like this kind of, I don't really care, I'm just here for the money, I'm bored. I thought Cloud was one of the best. You know? Barrett and Cloud. And maybe it's because I only made it a portion of the way through, maybe he gets better later. Oh, he's so good. Because if you played the original Seven, there's a similar path where like, he starts off as like this disengaged kind of whatever and then all of a sudden there's a turning point where you feel him become invested yeah right and like his character kind of changes like jill's should have <laughs> right like so maybe he gets better but i felt like he was a little flat and monotone in the delivery oh that's so good for him though that's exactly what cloud would be like well, but isn't it i mean maybe right don't know don't care and then the rest of them I don't know, like nothing noteworthy. I don't think they were bad, uh -huh. but there was nothing great about them either. But again, like if I had to pick my favorite out of them, it'd be Barrett. Barrett's so good. That actor did a phenomenal job. Put me on TV, I'm gonna drop some truth. And no one that I can think of was terrible, but like I said, Cloud, again, as far as I got in the game, he's okay. He's not bad, but he's not great. But yeah, uh, what's so special about it? If you're saying that he's great, it's probably because you got to the end and like his character grew and evolved, and I haven't gotten that far. I just thought he was really authentic, which is why I liked him a lot. But let me- I mean, if authentic is like your 13 year old bratty boy who just- Isn't that Cloud's character? Trying to play the cool and different kid, sure. That's exactly that's... what his character is supposed to be, right? Yeah, but- He's a mercenary and yeah. a former soldier. Like, I expect more out of him. I don't know. If the price is right. You're not the only person who has said that, by the way. I've read online on Reddit other people who had the same opinion of Cloud's voice acting. I just didn't share that opinion. I mean, I thought that, yes, he did deliver on those tones, but that was exactly what he was supposed to, right? I expect him to be Barrett by the end of this series. Let's oh, put it that way. Oh, okay, okay. And we should see an arc for sure. We should see a change in him. Right. But a lot of that'll be the writing of the character and how they actually, oh, absolutely. you know, script him. Yeah. Right, but so my thoughts on Remake, when I first played through it, I was actually impressed by a lot of the voice acting just based on how much better it was getting with each Final Fantasy. Right, and I hadn't played mm -hmm. 14 at this point, I don't think. But with Remake, because Japanese was the first language that was recorded, it wasn't optimized for English acting. 
仲間になりてえなら何度も言わせるな俺は雇われただけだ As I understand it, dubbing language after the fact is actually it's much faster, it's less scrutinized in the process, and so the acting just doesn't get the attention that it needs line by line, scene by scene, even more specifically. Prove to me you're the man Tifa says you are, that you're one of us. Never said I was. I'm just here for the paycheck. Because whenever you're recording line by line, it's never going to come across as. Authentic and real as recording entire chunks or ch entire scenes, especially、mm -hmm. if you have the other actor in front of you. So, with all of that in mind, I thought Final Fantasy VII Remake did some pretty great stuff with what they had to work with, but nothing has yet been on the same level as 16. And I don't think it will be on the same level as 16 with Rebirth either, where they clearly made、no. the extra effort and it most definitely paid off, right? I agree with you 100%. And it's not just that, because you know, I speak two languages. There's no such thing as like a straight word for word translation. That doesn't work either. Right. And there's cultural differences in the way people speak. Right. So it's not just a matter of translating the words, it's translating the intent.、Mm -hmm. And sometimes, like you said, if it's a cultural idiom or like there's just a cultural understanding of something that doesn't exist, or just there's a different way of saying it. Yeah. <laughs> Often, what you'll find is we are much more verbose in English than other languages typically are. Right. And so, like, ours is going to take up more time in seconds or milliseconds than most other languages will to convey the same message. Absolutely true. And then another example of that is the grunting. Like, if you watch anime, there's so much grunting, right? Just like,、mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> just like all this grunting. Yeah, it's like they're on the toilet the whole. <laughs> Yeah, it, sometimes it feels、yeah. like that. It's like you need to get out of the studio and go to the bathroom, dude. Like, this is <laughs> this is unacceptable, right. right? In fact, there's so much grunting that I actually took it and made the chocobo theme out of it. I'll have to、oh. show you that. So it's like, <laughs> that's so bad. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs>、uh. <laughs> Characters in remake, even with the same restrictions on all the voice actors across the board, which they all had, right? They had to record the script that was Japanese first and translated, and、uh -huh. with these restrictions, I don't think all of the performances were equal. Like in 16, everybody was good. Like there was very little range in terms of awesomeness of their performances. In 7 Remake, totally not the case for me. And specifically, and I even hate saying this, but Seven Remake was interesting because I felt like, I really hate saying this, but it's true. I felt like they did so much better casting the male characters than they did the female characters, which is a bummer because I wanted the female characters to rock or even be equal to the male character casting. The male performances, for the most part, were just stronger for whatever reason than the female performances. And I honestly am convinced this is a casting issue. Maybe also a little bit of a directing issue. I don't know if maybe the US based studio just wasn't very good at casting girls, or maybe there was a language or a cultural casting disconnect. Maybe because Japanese was cast and recorded first. Like you could even have a situation where people who don't speak English are weighing in on who should be cast for certain actors just based on the way they sound.、Mm -hmm. And maybe they don't actually know because they don't speak the English language. Whether or not they're authentically good or not, they just like the way they sound. So, and maybe they get the final call. I don't really know what it was, but I felt like maybe the English casting team was told the way that the tone of the voice of the character of the girls was supposed to be a certain way, and that was the most important. So they had to default to, I don't really know. Like, like I feel like they said, okay, Aerith needs to be bubbly like this, right? And Tifa needs to sound like this. And, and I hate to rip on the actors because. They're doing the best that they can and the best that they know how. Right. But I would have cast the female characters differently in remake. And again, that's not the actor's fault per se. If there's a problem with a character as a whole on screen, in voice acting, whatever, 
50% of good acting is good casting, right? So mm -hmm. an actor can only do what they can do when you hire them. And it's up to you to make sure that they can do it before you hire them. So I don't like blaming right. the actors because they're working as hard as they can. But on the other hand, I thought that Cloud was fantastic. Barrett was outstanding. Uh, Biggs, who's voiced by Gideon Emery, who is in like every video game. And he also plays Balthier in Final Fantasy XII. He was solid and awesome as always. Yeah, Biggs was good. He, he was funny, yeah. right? Nobody stood out to me as like bad okay. in this. That's good. And most people who aren't critics, like I am of voice acting, didn't have a problem with it. But those of us who, that's our job, it's just, it was a harder one. But Barrett was just above. He's like just he so was a good. cut above everybody else. Yeah. And then that's all I'll say about Remake. What about Final Fantasy 15? Let's move to 15. Yeah. So 15 had another overall, the voice acting was good. Of all the voice actors, I felt like Noctis was the weakest of them. Really? Believe it or not. Okay. I couldn't tell if it was due to like maybe some bad sound editing. I felt like some of his responses were a little bit abrupt and that's true. Often like like he was caught off guard, like yeah. he, you know, unaware. Yep. You know, if there's anything else, you can ask me. Yeah, uh, thanks. I feel like that was the directing and the localization more than anything. Yeah, maybe it's a character trait they were trying to portray. I don't know, but Gladiolus, I thought, had the, you know, the tone of the token tough guy, uh -huh. right? Like he was the big brawny dude. He had a good tone for his character. Uh huh. Afraid of nothing. Ignis was like the too cool for school kind of guy. I love Ignis. And Prompto, he was just like the little kid trying to fit in with the adults, <laughs> right? Kind of thing. Like the little brother. Yeah. Luna Freya, I thought was decent, right? Yeah. But my favorite was Arden. I'm an impatient traveler, ready to turn ship. Arden was good. Arden was my favorite. And again, it goes back to the same thing about Ultima, Kefka Palazzo, although he wasn't voiced, obviously, right? But like, I feel like it takes a very special actor to play a villain. Uh huh. Because you know that if you do a good job, people are going to hate you. Yeah. And love you at the same time, though. Right. Well, so, yeah, some people, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I felt like this is another one where he was very measured in his speech very sure of himself, mm -hmm. like Ultima, but different. And he just delivered that character phenomenally well, right? I felt like the other voice actors, they did well, but I felt like they were a little bit slippery, if that makes sense, in their roles. Mm -hmm. Whereas Arden, like he stepped out and with his first line, just stuck it and stayed with it. Like he never wavered from his character. And so he's by far my favorite in 15. I think that's totally fair. And I wish they would have done more with Arden, but of course they ran out of time and budget, but we would have liked to see more from him. He probably recorded a lot more. We just didn't ever get to see it. Oh yeah, I'm sure he did. Yeah. On screen, yeah. I'm hoping that somehow this success that they're having more recently, because remember they also spun off some of the other smaller studios they owned recently, and they're kind of refocusing on their AAA franchises. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that like this kind of refactoring inside there as a fan service, they'll be like, by the way, that DLC that was supposed to come out for 15, we're going to release it after all. And well, I don't know. Uh, I don't dare hope anything else for 15. And yeah. yeah, but I agree with your whole, like the thing you said in one of the other episodes, like they tried to go open world. And it just cost them the story. That was a mistake. They had to chop the story because they had to focus so much time and money on the open world. Right. And I've always been one that's like, open world is its own thing. I understand it. I know some people want that. But as a Final Fantasy player, I want linear. I want a beginning. I want an end. I want a straight line to get there, or at least a, a plotted course. I don't want to like go around meandering all over the place, not knowing what the hell is going on. <laughs> That's right? fair. I don't want that. That's fair. I thought that 16 achieved a good balance. Like it was linear, but you could still explore in certain areas and you could still grind if right. you wanted to. I thought that was really it, exactly. good. Exactly. Like, 13 was too linear to me, right? Yeah, that's kind of the joke about 13. Yeah. Right. It was line. too linear. And actually, I actually enjoyed that part about it, but that's just me. Like, it's one thing when it's linear and like the wall is behind you, right? Mm -hmm. So, no matter what, you can't go back. <laughs> you can't look backwards. That's one thing. And then there's another thing where like it's linear, but you can go back if you want to go see something or do something, mm -hmm. which is what 16 gave us, which I yeah. think is the great balance there. Yeah. What I really wish 16 would have done is once you beat the game, and, I, and actually, I hope any future Final Fantasy does this, once you beat the game, I would love for them to give you the option to then just pick any chapter and replay it. You can kind of do that with the Aretta Stone, but you're right. You can't do that from like Final Fantasy mode. No, but I, yeah, that's really what I want is like, yes, the new game plus is great and you get to play it again. All that's awesome. But I would love the ability to say, you know what? I really liked 
you know, chapter 37 or what, whatever it was. Yeah. But I missed something. I want to go replay it again. Just that one chapter, right? I wish they would do that. That can't be that hard. Yeah. Right? <laughs> you would think it wouldn't be that difficult. Yeah. And I have some of the same opinions of 15 as you do. I had a love-hate relationship with that game. I actually liked the open world. I can handle the open world in certain circumstances. I thought it was kind of fun, but I'm not a person who needs it. And I do think that it ended up costing the Mm -hmm. story and I would have rather had full story that wasn't cut off or cut things out. That's the whole point of a JRPG. It's the story. Yeah. Like if you can't get that right, I don't care what else you do. Yep. You can have the best voice acting. You can have the best open. Everything can be right. If you mess the story up, what was the point? Then what was, yeah, exactly. And when it comes to 15, like I, I also had major issues with the ending as we won't talk about here a lot of the same issues that I ended up having with 16's ending. But I will also say that 15 had some of my favorite moments mm-hmm. and has my all-time favorite character. Ignis Ciencia is my all-time favorite character. I know full well. I won't ask you to slow down. If I cannot keep up, I will bow out. <sighs> what says his majesty? Knocked. You are king. One cannot lead by standing still. And as far as the voice acting went, I would say it was an overall decent step up from previous games in the series, not including 14, right? Because that's kind of its own beast. And the good news is they did continue to get better and better over time. But I will say that after going back and kind of rewatching some of the cutscenes from 15 after playing 16, they're just not the same level. (gasps) Gladdy! Hear us. Look at you guys holding your own out there. (laughs) What can I say? You look good. All things considered, you guys are staying here, right? That's the plan. When you have time, we have catching up to do. Sure. 16 was just so much better than all the other ones because it was recorded in English first. At least it was better voice acting in English. I will say that 15 Sid was my favorite Sid. Yeah, 15 Sid was cool. Didn't your daddy tell you? She's a custom classic, not some beat up old clunker. Not necessarily voice acting wise, but he was my favorite Sid of all of them. I don't know. I, I loved 16 Sid. It's so, it's so hard. But No, he was great. Uh, I'm not saying he's bad. Just 15. He was a good Sid. I don't know what it is about that old. Though I couldn't handle Cindy at all. Sid's grease monkey granddaughter. She was the worst. So Cindy was. Oh, she's the worst. She was a special uh, <laughs> treat. Nice. Because. <laughs> As someone who grew up in Texas and spent some significant time in the South. But did everybody just walk around with a bra that's way too small for them as their only shirt? Is that a thing in Texas? I wouldn't say everybody did that. <laughs> but if you ever watch the Dukes of Hazard, But some people did. But some people did. Oh, and gross. I have to say, like, her accent, while not spot on, was pretty close. Okay. Well, I'm not from Texas, so I can't speak to that. All I can say is I could not take her seriously, nor could I take her as a joke. She was just annoying to me. The demons are liable to rip y'all to shreds. But as far as the voice acting goes in the four main characters, I think Ignis was the strongest. That was the plan. Yet the reports of the invasion are all the same. How could every headline in the kingdom be wrong? Noctis was actually pretty good. I thought that his flaws were due to the circumstances of recording the English second. I'm as calm as I'm gonna get. Prompto, when I first heard him, I'm like, oh, this guy's gonna drive me nuts. Hashtag sorry, not sorry. And then I ended up totally loving him by the end of the game. I never imagined it'd work out like this, that I'd get to go on an adventure with you guys. Gladio was probably the weakest of the four in my book. No way Specs can complain when you come back to camp this early. Crusted in sand. But I think all of them pulled it off and they did what they needed to do and the performances were good enough and a step up from past games that I didn't really have a lot of complaints. Whoa, look at the size of that thing. A divine presence indeed. It's really him. And he's enormous, like ginormous. Some of the side characters sucked though. Oh, and I think there were also 
children characters voiced by adults, which was the worst. Prince Noctis, were, were you excited to marry Lady Luna Freya? I think what you said earlier actually makes a lot of sense now as to why I had a problem with Noctis so much. Because I always felt like his lines were like just abrupt. Like the yeah. previous character didn't actually finish saying, they were like, they were at the end. They may have been in the last word of what they were going to say. And he would like, huh? Or like interject yeah, totally. right into there. And it's like, whoa, Dick hasn't even finished saying what he's going to say. But that's not his fault because like, that's because of the way they recorded it. That's the editing thing. Yeah. Yeah. That makes yeah, sense. And they had this guy in a studio with a director telling him, you need to say that with more passion. You need to make that louder. Right. And then they're using those cuts versus like being in the room and listening to the other people around you and being able to react to that naturally. Like he was totally at a disadvantage. All of the actors in the English as the second voice recorded is they're all at a disadvantage. Yeah. He's like, listen, you need to sound like an emo boy that got butchered at the salon, <laughs> right? That's what you need to sound like. And he's like, I don't even know what that is. Entrusted it to me. Then why didn't he tell me that? Why did he stand there smiling as I left? Why? Why did he lie to me? Okay, moving to Final Fantasy XIV. Now, Ernest, I know you haven't played this, so I'll go through this. My thoughts. I did play it for two weeks. Right, but you played Realm Reborn, right? Uh, I played before Realm Reborn. Oh, I don't even know if that was the Realm Reborn actors or not. I imagine it probably was. I don't know, but a Realm Reborn was when they fixed it. That's why it was Reborn. <laughs> well, they fixed, yeah, they fixed gameplay and everything. So, so you haven't played fourteen. I haven't played 11, so I'll be relying on you for that. I mean, both Final Fantasy MMOs, they both kind of carve out a different path than classic games in the series because 14 and 11, they're online games. Yay! <laughs> Leviathan! Oh, I actually really like you, but whatever. No. And 14 has remained popular for years, even becoming, I think, the most popular MMO that there is. I think a year or two ago it became that. And it keeps going and going with new expansion pack after expansion pack and lots and lots and lots of voice acting. And it's not fully voiced, but it's definitely heavily voiced, especially as it progresses. And I will say that the acting in Final Fantasy XIV is fascinating because it started out not so great. So. In Realm Reborn, some of the characters were downright abysmal. Like, they just were not well acted. You'd have to be bloody daft to turn your nose up at a chance like this. And again, that's the casting fault, right? That's whoever chose that studio and whichever actors the studio chose. It's their fault when the acting sucks, most likely. When it sucks this all around. So when you say a Realm Reborn, you're talking about 14.2.0 early on. Yeah, so Realm Reborn is like after Bahamut destroys everything. That's from when I started the game. I started the game at okay, Realm yeah, Reborn. Yeah. So, right, so I played it before right. that. So I'm assuming it probably has the same actors as Realm Reborn. They probably carried those through. I don't know, though. I actually have to look back. But I don't know, man. They made it pretty clear from the Bahamut trailer that they blew the whole thing up and started from zero. So Maybe they did have totally different actors. I would assume they like just cleaned the slate and just said all new people that's interesting i need to look including that up including bringing in yoshi p and what is it creative business unit number three or <laughs> whatever their group is called You're right 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 which is the greatest name ever yeah so in 14 realm reborn some of the characters are abysmal and they're not just abysmal in like their voice acting performances but in the personality of the characters too so some of them just aren't very strong characters. But when it became clear that the game would survive beyond its first story because it had been turned around by Yoshi P and the team that was now doing this after the part that you played that shall not be named or spoken of by so many games. Oh, it was terrible. <laughs> it was terrible. And I didn't play A Realm Reborn, but I will tell you that going from 11 to 14... That first version of 14 was horrendous. I've heard such... I watched a documentary that's actually in Japanese all about that. It was so bad. Ugh, it was so bad. I've and heard. I remember like, yes, it had newer graphics and everything, but I was like, you call this an upgrade? This is way worse than what I have. And then I was like, I'm not I'm not playing this thing. Interesting. Anymore. Yeah. So, because Realm Reborn is good. It's playable, but it's not great. 
right? It, it's probably mm-hmm. great compared to what it was before they fixed it, but some of the characters weren't very strong and the developers, the creative team of that game, when they realized it was going to continue and they could do expansion packs beyond Realm Reborn, they did something super crazy. They fired the voice acting studio they had been using and they hired a completely different studio that was based out of the UK. And that, I believe, is the same studio they used for 16, actually. So after dozens of hours of playing this game, us gamers, myself included, suddenly noticed the voice of every single character change. They regaled me with tales of a champion amongst champions, ones whose tireless service to the crown merited the highest honor we might bestow. Change is indeed a perilous thing. For we who seek it, and they who fear it. And not only that, they went further than just changing the voice actors, but they completely redid a lot of the personalities of many of the main characters. And they basically killed off characters that clearly weren't as popular, even main ones. In that regard, they are hardly alone. So they're like, okay, these characters are gonna die. These ones, we're gonna give them completely new personality to. Be it in the snow? All in the clouds, we few will see that the dawn's light shines again. While I am grateful to our friends in the north for their hospitality, it is an off good to be back. Everybody's getting new voices. We're going to make this even better. And it was just, it was abrupt for those of us who are playing. We're like, whoa. But I'm so glad they did it because it was so much better when they changed it than it was before. And I had fun with Realm Reborn, but after that, it was an even better series, an even Mm -hmm. better game. The characters were so much stronger. Ishgard is not wont to aid its neighbors, but that does not preclude it from manipulating them to serve its own interests. Were I still commander of the Braves, I would doubtless have replied, for the future of Eorzea. But I'm not that man. Not anymore. So somehow by using the same characters, at least in look and name, although some of them actually got a name change as well. There was one character who was a main character who wore a mask and she was called Ida. Oh, how to describe them. They look like gizzle greens, floating ones that worship the primal Ramu. Not only do they take off her mask, they give her a new name. She says she was pretending to be Ida all this time. Oh, wow. And she's a totally different look, totally different. Ca- yeah. You've known all along, haven't you? That I wasn't Ida. Of course, we all recognized you at once. It was Papalimo who persuaded us to maintain the charade. And then she had a little companion who nobody really liked. Conducive to peaceful communication. So they just killed him. <laughs> now, let us see how good a student I truly was. Heroically. Wow. It was a super bold move, but it totally paid off. Eorzea's blade of light, shearing through endless shrouds of darkness. I have lost count of the many petty crises that I was helpless to resolve and of the people whose actions I could not understand. The new characters, new personalities were just fantastic. And to this day, I absolutely love the twins, Alphano and Alice. Bulls so well voiced. The main characters are all fantastically voiced. One day that pertness is going to cost you your tail, my girl. Don't say I didn't warn you. Same Studio 16, right, again? So this is mm-hmm. some good t- casting going on. Pray forgive this fool. But even now, I cannot let go of my dream. My dream of a tomorrow in which no child need freeze alone in the snow. And that's just the start. I mean, there's a lot of great actors in 14. I would say Grahatia, Yishtola, Uriange, Thancred, the twins, obviously. Everyone is good, right? As good as you can probably get, given that they didn't have the luxuries that the English actors had in 16, where they got to record English first. Mm -hmm. So they're still at a disadvantage in that way, but I think they did a really good job especially when compared to other Final Fantasies and Sir Emmerich. They love Sir Emmerich. Some wounds do not heal. The dead cannot be returned to us. But we the living can yet choose another course. Here and now, we can lay down this burden, this hatred, this vengeance. You don't know who he is, Ernest. Just know. Uh -uh. You're missing out. 
He's amazing. Now that the dust has settled, what will you do? Not as a scion, I mean, but what do you want for yourself? Okay, Final Fantasy 13. No more MMOs for me ever again. <laughs> you have children. They're your MMO now. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't have time. It's it's not that I'm against MMOs. I just have no yeah, time. Yeah, exactly. And I know, obviously, with Eleven, what was involved, right? So right. those were my college years and beyond, right? So yeah. I had time back then, not anymore. Yeah, and you played for a decade, Eleven, right? On and off, but for the better part of it, like 80 to 90% of that decade, yeah. Wow. That's amazing. I played yeah. 14 for two years, and I'll pick it up again when I'm done with other Final Fantasy stuff. Yeah. It's just fun. But yeah, it's like one to two hours at night when the kids are in bed is all I can do. Yeah. That's it. There was no such thing as one to two hours with 11. Yeah. No such thing. <laughs> one to two hours, you couldn't actually do anything. That's fair. <laughs> different era, different game entirely. Different game. Okay, so 13, take you back to... Final Fantasy 13, where the main character is Lightning. So I actually just finished playing Final Fantasy 13 for the first time a few months ago. I never had gotten around to it. I started it when it was released, but then I put it down and never picked it up again until a few months ago. And this was an interesting one in the world of voice acting because similar to 7 Remake, as unfortunate and as dumb as it sounds, the voice acting in 13 was generally stronger with the male characters as though whoever is casting the girls just cares about, again, like maybe what their tone is or something, not how effective of an actor they are, which I think is dumb. Like they need to change that in the casting if that's a thing that's happening. Whatever it is, the female characters just didn't have depth and they didn't really make me feel much. Maybe that thing did save us. I don't feel much if the voice actor is always on the surface of every line, if that makes sense. Like they just, yeah. they're not really feeling it, so I don't feel it either. So, okay, an example of this, to me, the best acting performance comes from Saws. Hey, 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 let's be rational now. Do you remember Saws, who's the guy with the afro and the baby chocobo who lives in yeah, his yeah, hair? Yeah, 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 chocobo, we just can't catch a break, can we? He's one of the main characters, yeah. yeah. he's one of the main characters. He was voiced by Reno Wilson. Don't you even! You think you die, and that's that? Mm -hmm. You think you die and everything will be sugar and rainbows? And Reno Wilson, actually, I looked him up. He has a pretty decent list of TV acting credits as well. He was authentic. He was believable. He had good comedic timing, which again, remember, mm -hmm. that's not something easy to come by. <laughs> not so tough now, huh? Hey, hey, that wasn't like a challenge now, all right? Hey. And he was just a breath of fresh air in this kind of early game in the voice acting era. I just thought he was fantastic. He was the top credit in my perspective in this game. How do I put this? If they don't carry it out, we'll see end up as one of those things. What I'm saying is, if your sister's gone that far, I mean, she might still, how, how can I? <sighs> There's no way to turn a Lassie back into a human. Even if she completes her focus, there's no changing her fate. She'll live her life as a foul sea slave. And then after Saws, I would say Snow and Hope were good. Keep fighting and surviving until I find the answers I need. There are no answers! You're running from what you deserve. Well, why don't you tell me what I deserve? The same fate. And thankfully, so was Fang. Fang is a female character, so that was a relief. It's my fault Grand Pulse ended up like this, isn't it? But I wasn't in love with Lightning's performance, and I also wasn't in love with her character. It's a stupid acronym. So I think she's written poorly, but I also don't think she was cast well. Thinks he's everybody's pal. Never liked him much. So, you know, that is what it is. But I don't like to rip on the actors again because it's casting. It's casting that's a problem if the actor sucks, which is such a bummer because she's designed super cool. I wanted her to be an awesome character, have a lot of depth. Mm -hmm. She totally kicks butt. She just doesn't have much of a personality, right? But I think I have to say, and I hate saying this, but my least favorite voice acting of the Final Fantasy series actually comes from a character in Final Fantasy 13. And wow. anyone out there who understands good acting and bad acting in a real true sense and has played 13 probably knows exactly who I'm talking about. <laughs> and it feels so mean to say it, but there just 
isn't enough time here to talk about how much I did not like the voice performance of the character Vanille. Come on, Pops. You've really got to keep it together, okay? Again, it really just comes down to casting. Mm -hmm. It seems to me that she was cast, again, because she had a bubbly sounding voice. I didn't know you felt that way. <laughs> not for her acting ability, which that's not the actress's fault that she was put in that position. They chose her. What was she supposed to do? Turn down the role, right? She didn't know she wasn't cut out for it. I know. She belongs in the Barbie movie. Yeah, because, you know? yeah, they're like tongue-in-cheek acting, so she may have fit better there, right? She didn't know she wasn't cut out for this, and I'm sure she's a lovely actress with many talents. I just don't think she was the right person for that character. Maybe any voiced character beyond, like, a children's show. Really? Okay. And why is that? She'd probably be good for, like, a children's cartoon. Mm -hmm. She does have a cute voice for that. And then, you know, authentic acting to the standard of, that I hold people is not as important in, like, a kid's cartoon, right? right? I mean, there are certain JRPGs that that's their stick. Oh, totally. Right? They're like... And it's annoying. They're all female. They're all bubbly. Yeah. Right? But it's a JRPG. Yeah. And that's their niche. That's the place where you cast... That. And that's fine. It just doesn't work for me. <laughs> and so if they're aiming for like a more westernized audience of, I'd like to think I'm a relatively sophisticated female, <laughs> like that doesn't play. Mm -hmm. If they're aiming for the audience of the typical JRPG anime kind of crowd that doesn't care, then they may have hit the right note, right? It's a casting decision. Right. Didn't work for me though. But I mean, in their defense, it would have been a little tricky to find the right person to voice Vanille. Since the character was written as a mousy, bouncy girl from the start, which isn't really a common, authentic type of human. So it's hard to find an authentic human who can authentically play the mousy, bouncy girl in a believable manner, if that makes sense. So, smells nice. All naturey. The problem really kind of begins right there. But I forgot to ask you, what were your thoughts on 13? So it's funny with 13 because. No one really stood out to me. I see. Good or bad. Okay. And so like 13 is one of those where like, as you've mentioned, right? People have their problems with it for many different reasons. Whether it was too linear, whether it was not linear, whether the combat was good enough, not bad enough. Mm -hmm. Most people aren't discussing voice acting, right? Right. Now, here's the funny thing. I never finished it. Oh. But I had a similar thought to yours, which is Saws was the best of the bunch. Mm -hmm. But the difference between Saws and everybody else was smaller than the difference between Barrett and the rest of the cast in the seven remake. Okay. Barrett stood so much higher, head and shoulders above everybody else in that remake that it's a marked difference, right? Uh -huh. It's almost like you got a professional in with a bunch of kids. <laughs> but 13 to me was just like everyone was kind of not bad. Not memorable. But they weren't great. They were just okay. Yeah. And the gameplay was okay to me. So like yeah. the theme here is that 13 was an okay game to me. It wasn't great. It wasn't terrible. I know some people have different opinions. So, like, nothing really stood out to me. The other small notes I had here were some scenes, things seemed out of sync with what was going on in the scene. So, like... Totally agree with that. Some things felt a little forced. Like, oh, for sure. There were, like, these emotional scenes where they had, like, this soft music in the background, but the voices did not, like, fit the mood of the scene yes. that they were trying to portray. No. What do you plan to do? I need to know. I told you. Save Sarah, protect Cocoon, and have myself a big happy family. That's really all I can call out in terms of like a disjoint experience I had there. Yeah. I was neither impressed nor depressed <laughs> by 13. It just exists. It's just there. In my catalog. It's a thing. Right. It, it's a chair. In the series. <laughs> it's literally a chair. But again, like it's I... It's literally a chair. Yeah, it's... <laughs> and, and I know like that's not like the best like review someone should give <laughs> you it. You can sit on Final Fantasy thirteen, <laughs> But maybe someone who's never played and is kind of on the fence, maybe they'll like that. And they'll be like, no, no, I actually am cool with that. I like linear. I like that type of combat. And I don't really care whether these voice actors like nail it as long as they're not terrible. Maybe that's their game. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's great. They'll hear it on this podcast and go for it. And by the same token, we already know that there's plenty of people that are pissed off by the combat and the linearity. So maybe the mediocre voice acting is like, that's it. I'm not going to play. It. <laughs> right. So like maybe we save them time, too. Right. But it's not a game where I would say that if I played it, I'm never going to get that time of my life back. Like, right. it's not bad. There are fun elements of it, but 
Yeah, that's exactly. Yeah, and it also kind of got wacky with like the Lassies oh, and the whatevers. And the Lassie and the whole story was a total farce. E like it was such hot garbage. She's a Lassie. What? A pulse Lassie? The Falsee has her captive. I hated the story. I hated the ending. <laughs> I enjoyed some of the characters. That's why I stopped playing it because I was like. At a certain point, I was like, I cannot keep all this stuff straight. Nobody could. I don't know what's going That's on. That's the thing. Like, if you go on Reddit, you know how, like, with every Final Fantasy, there are people who dive into the Final Fantasy lore and can explain, like, all the things for you that you don't understand? Right. With 13, nobody can do it. It's just everybody saying, I don't know. I was confused the whole time. Nobody wants to. But nobody can. Because there is, like, it's not good. <laughs> it's bad storytelling. I'm sorry. Yeah, it wasn't great. Like I said, it's not like a game where I'm like, oh no, Jolie, we're going to skip this one. We're just not going to do it and review it. Like, it's not that bad. No, I enjoyed parts of it. I even enjoyed parts of the combat, right. strangely enough. That's what I'm saying. Like, I was... F- like, it was super hard in some ways and challenging, but this isn't an episode about combat, so I won't go into it. But no, I had a good time. I just hated parts of it <laughs> along the way. Yeah, there's the theme. The combat, the the story, the linearity... The voice acting, maybe not the story, that was bad. The rest of them were just okay. That's my that's my synopsis of 13. It's the chair. It's the chair. The chair of the series. <laughs> it's usable. It's not going to fall out from underneath you, <laughs> but it's not going to be comfortable. You're not going to want to sit in it. And you don't think about it when you're in a room with it at all. It's not a recliner. It's kind of like a dinner chair without a cushion on it. <laughs> there you go. Yep, perfect. So what about 12? What about Final Fantasy 12? Do you have any thoughts on that one? So 12 was an interesting game for me overall. Star Wars. I did have some thoughts about it. Final Fantasy Star Wars. <laughs> Final Fantasy Star Wars. It was it was very much like Star it Wars. Totally like was. I was expecting any moment for me to like come around the corner and Jabba, Jabba the, the Hutt was there or you know, the same you know what, even, something, right? Even this soundtrack, which was I don't believe was Nobuo Yamatsu, is very Star Wars-esque. <laughs> Like songs right. sound so similar to John Williams. It was definitely inspired by John Williams. Exactly. And and the graphics were really good, mm-hmm. right, for its era totally. right, of game. So 2006. Yeah. So some notes I put down here were overall, I love the dialogue. So this is better than 13. I really enjoyed it. The voice actors definitely conveyed their emotion. But it, I don't know how to describe it other than to say it felt lighter than I would have expected at certain times. Like, okay. again, maybe it's like, like lighter. The delivery kind of fell short. Of what I want, like I expected a little bit more and it didn't quite get there. You want more passion. Yeah. The non-human voice acting was actually really good for non-humans. Like Fran? Right. Or like for who? The little vendor guy in the beginning of the game reminds me of the one that gets him through the gate initially. No problem. The desert teams are in trouble. I'd be sending you to early grave, my boy. Oh, yeah. Very Star Wars-esque. Exactly. Right? But what I'm saying is, like, for voicing a non-human character, it was pretty good. Right? I enjoyed it. Because you don't really have a reference for what an alien species sounds like. That's a good point. You don't. So as long as it's believable. Other than Star Wars. So you do the best you can. Mm -hmm. And they did a pretty good job. Don't give me a scare like that. (laughs) You're lucky that ended where it did. I don't, like, have any specific call-outs for what characters. Like, Van, obviously, was, you know, good and Ooh. a couple of the others, but... Hey, that's mine. I would overall rate this as, like, above 13, but below all the ones that we've talked about so far, maybe tied with 15. Oh, wow. Okay. That's interesting. So when we were preparing for this particular discussion, mm-hmm. I watched cutscenes to remind myself. There were some memories of voice acting that I had that stuck out that I could not deny, nor did I need reminding of. But when it came to 12, I wanted to refresh my memory. And it was interesting because when I got to 12, because I was working my way backwards, the newness of voice acting and all the issues that came with that newness really started to show up for me. Stop being so stubborn. Keep on like this and you're going to get us all killed. To me, it was clear that it was still more like voice recording then it was voice mm-hmm. acting, right? So probably a similar approach back in 2006 to recording Saturday morning cartoons. Like you go into a sound booth, you read your lines into a mic, mm-hmm. box checked, right? So I assume that they had probably directors for these voice actors, but I doubt that they had really a lot of opportunities to like workshop 
or pull the best performances out of the actors. Yeah. yeah. So every performance at this point needs to be taken with a grain of salt. So 12 and before. The gods do not smile on us. I don't think any of the voice actors in 12 or previous games in the Final Fantasy series would point to any Sorry. game in 2006 or before as being demonstrations of their best work. <laughs> right. But I actually think 10 was better than 12. We haven't gotten to 10 yet, but that was a little bit shocking to me that 12 kind of regressed a little bit. That's but. interesting. Okay. I'm not sure I agree with you, but I think I would agree with you with specific performances. Like I think there are some mm -hmm. actors in 10 who are stronger than some of the actors in 12, if that makes sense. But I wouldn't say that as an entire cast or as the style of acting. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, but I think it also has to do, at least for me, that if the story is exceptional, it helps take the voice acting up a little. And I think that 10 had an exceptional storytelling. I know a lot of people disagree with that. But 12 to me was like not the best. And so like the voice acting just would automatically be a little bit lower because you don't have like the epic kind of thing that 10 did. Okay. I think there's an argument to be made that if the story is stronger, the actors can relate to it more and potentially give a better performance. I could see that. I mean, in 12, I feel like because they're in the era of just deliver your lines, check the box, I think you can hear which character performers probably had stronger skills as an actor just based on their ability to perform under those circumstances. Mm -hmm. But again, I don't think anybody was like outstanding, right? I thought Pinello yeah. actually did a pretty good job. I'm sorry. He is your brother. It's just... You don't understand how much we lost to the war. I thought Vane was good. What I ask, I ask plain. My hopes now rest with you. Fran. This mist, he holds a stone. It controls him as it did Mjern. Ash was okay, although I really didn't like her character and some of, some of her acting mm -hmm. I wasn't a huge fan of. How dare you say that? The Empire attacked us, stole all we hold dear, and you would have me save them from war? But, you know, the character sucking isn't the voice performer's fault. It's the writer's fault. And, oh, we uh -huh. did mention Balthier. Balthier is played by that fantastic man, Gideon Emery. I play the leading man. Who else? Who seems to be good in everything he voices. Give me a bit more time and I got you. Hi, my lady. They arrived but recently. So he was one of the stronger mm -hmm. voices in the game. I wasn't crazy about Van's performance or Vaughn's. It's Vaughn, right? I think they call him Vaughn now that you bring it up, but I called him Van. It's fine. <laughs> it's whatever. hard to know. Nobody knows how to pronounce like most of these names in, in the game. Oh, I'm sure they do this on purpose because in 11, this was the case for like literally everything yeah. <laughs> had a awkward, weird name. And I was convinced and I'm still convinced to this day. It's a conspiracy. The only reason they do that is so that they can trademark and copyright those as unique oh. as opposed to being like. A generic name. Now, that's probably not true, but that's what I could convince. Because again, they they spell stuff so weird. It's like, what? where did you even get this well, from? Well, it's like Titus right? versus Titus. All of us in the United States would say yeah. Titus. But mm -hmm. then later they came out and said that it was Titus, which is awkward sounding in English. And we'd all been saying it wrong. But nobody ever says his name in the game. Because I think it was still at the point where you could choose the main character's name. You remember that? How you could actually rename the characters? I remember that being the case in early Final Fantasies. I don't remember because I haven't played yeah. 10 in a very long time. It was still like that with 9. I remember because I changed the character Dagger to something else because I thought Dagger was a stupid name. I can't remember, but like, you're right. Like most of us in the U.S. would pronounce it Titus. Now, I could see where Titus would make sense for some of us because like, again, I speak two languages and I is pronounced as E, That's right? That's true, yeah. So I could see that, but... No, it, it's Titus, right? <laughs> Especially when you consider that, like, he played Blitzball. He was in the water, water, tide. Oh, it's Titus. Like, touche. You know what? I, I didn't even think about that, but that is like a given. And that's totally a Final Fantasy thing to name somebody after something so literally, right? Like, there's so many characters right. that are named that way. And, like, even Waka, right? Like, you could tell that Waka was like an attempt at trying to take, like, the Hawaiian language or yeah, an, like an Indo Pacific Islander. language type yes. thing. But yeah, I agree with you. To me, 12 was better than 13 in some ways. I still think 10 was better. Yeah, that's an interesting take. Now, even though I wasn't crazy about Vaughn's performance. I know, I know, just a little more. I actually looked up the voice actor for Vaughn and mm -hmm. 
I think it's actually a bummer that I didn't like his performance and that it seems like a lot of people didn't really love his performance in that game. Hey, no problem. It's a bummer because he was just a teenager when he recorded mm. for Vaughn. I found it. It's mine. Right? He, he was just a kid. The actor was just a kid and he was cast as the lead in this major game. Like, again, not his fault, mm -hmm. right? And maybe he could have become a much better, stronger actor years later, but some people don't hit their stride till their mid-20s in acting, right? Like, mm -hmm. they just don't get it until that point. And it's rare to get an amazing actor at the age of 16. It happens, but it's rare. So I'm not sure that we can really judge him too harshly. Especially when it's only has done or ever done voice acting as opposed to screen acting. Right. Well, this is basically the only credit he really has. Like, he has a couple other things, but he didn't really work again after the game, probably because of the criticism. And I don't know that he really worked much before it either. So it was kind of like a lucky break for him that didn't really amount to anything in the long run. And I know I am defending him for being a child, but I also need to say fairly that conversely, the actor who played Larsa who is also a child in this game, did a pretty good job. And I think he was like 13, maybe 14, mm -hmm. when he recorded the part. Listen to me. The men of my family, we are taught to place the needs of others before those of our own. So, I don't know. I mean, in general, I think 12 accomplished what it set out to accomplish. And even though it was voiced, there was still a lot of reading, even during cutscenes. So it's still a very new craft. The actors had a lot working against them. And... It did the job. I still enjoyed the game. Yeah, the game was good. I was never like, oh, this is the worst. There were a couple of Vaughn moments. I was like, Ugh, right. but it didn't kill it. I enjoyed it more than 13, but less than 10 and 15. Okay, we have two games left. Final Fantasy XI, Ernest. I didn't play it. I know very little about it. So remember that 10 was the first like officially voice acted game, right? Uh -huh. You, you understand me? Nine was the last of the main line that was voiceless going back all the way to one, right? Mm -hmm. So when you look at it, you say 10 has like, at least in my opinion, good voice acting. Then you have 11, then you have 12, which had okay voice acting, 13 had okay voice acting, et cetera, et cetera. You would figure like 11 should kind of fall in line there, except for the fact that 11 was an MMO. And so 11 had a much longer development tail than a mainline Final Fantasy would. So it probably evolved. So if you consider when 11 released initially, it was more than likely in development at the same time as 10. Yeah. Right? And actually, to be Maybe honest with nine. you, it was probably in development during 9, right? Mm -hmm. So this leads to the fact for me to tell you that 11 has no voice acting in it. Wait, none? None. Oh. <laughs> Are you serious? That whole lead up with... Like, you didn't even mention that in our little notes that we exchanged. I know, because I wanted to surprise you. So <laughs> so everybody who played Eleven is just looking at me as I'm talking through this and being like, there's no voice acting Eleven. You're not going to talk about Eleven. And I'm like, hey, I was supposed to do it in Eleven. Let me tell you what was so funny about it, though. I swore that there was voice acting in it. Oh. When you sent me to do the research, I was like looking drastically for these scenes and could not find them anywhere. Isn't that interesting? And then I found a Reddit thread that said that Square Enix had at one point published some voice acted scenes, I think in Japanese, okay. and then pulled them because I think they were planning to voice act at least the cutscene. So remember, it's yeah. an MMO, right? Yeah. So like 99% of the game is not going to have voice acting anyway. Because it's you and characters and you're out running around, you're fighting. The only place you would have the voice acting, if there was any, would be in the cutscenes. Yeah. Right? And I was like, okay, let me go look up the cutscenes. Everything is text-based. All of it. And I was thinking to myself, I swear this thing had voice acting. So somehow, Eleven, in a purely text format, had convinced me that there was voice acting. I could hear the voice actors in my head. They didn't actually exist. Well, that says something good for the writers of the dialogue. I think it says more of the fact that we had to use our imagination. <laughs> well, that too. But you can't use imagination with crappy dialogue. Right. But when I went back and thought about it later, I was like, okay, you're right. I don't really remember hearing a bunch of the characters. But there was this one character. Her name was Shantoto. She was a tarot tarot. I swore I remembered her, like especially like a cackle and a laugh. Never existed as far as I can tell. Really? This reminds me exactly of like 
there are these things that exist out there that they're like part of the public consciousness, but they never actually existed. Okay. Can you think of an example? Oh, I know. A movie where Sinbad plays a genie. Yeah, that's a thing, right? No. It was never made. It never exi- It never Wait, existed. I can picture him as a genie in my mind. Right. It doesn't exist. What? Yes. This is what I'm telling you. This is exactly the expression I had when I went back looking for the cutscenes from Eleven, and they didn't exist. Sinbad as genie. <laughs> You're right. It never existed. That's... That is crazy. It doesn't actually exist, right? But you ask any about it, like, yeah, I remember that movie. I saw it. That's you didn't. It, <laughs> it doesn't exist, right? It's just like the voice acting for Eleven. That's nuts. Right. <laughs> but I chalked that up to, again, I think this thing was actually a development during Nine. And while Ten did release with voice acting, because the tale was all the way back to Nine, it was released with no voice acting. And I think what happened was at a certain point, Square Enix released these voice acted cutscenes. Because they had the intent of actually voice acting this stuff. Mm-hmm. And then I think it, they realized like, hey, you know, we got 14 in the pipe. Eleven's not really going to survive last th- that much longer. Joke's on them. It's still running. Is it actually? Is that true? Yeah. Eleven is still going? As far as I know, it's still running right now. Yes. Mm-hmm. <gasps> I know it's due to shut down soon, but. It still has an active and loyal fan base. No way. Oh, absolutely. Let me tell you, that game, not only does it have an active and loyal fan base for the current thing that Square Enix released, but years and years ago, there was a breach, source code was released. Oh. So there are homegrown servers all over the place. That have 11 on them. That have 11 on them. Now, they're not going to have any of the newer content. Like Most of them don't actually go past level 75, which was the initial cap on there. But that's how loyal these people are. They're playing on these like private servers was what they call them. Wow. And just kind of living the original experience of 1 to 75, which was a grueling experience. So it was as Japanese of an RPG as you can get. Well, there you have it. So then what about our first Final Fantasy with voice acting in it, Final Fantasy X? And if I remember correctly, Ernest, your favorite Final Fantasy of all time is six. Right. Your favorite villain is Kefka. That's your favorite villain of any creative work is Kefka. Anything. Yeah. Period. But then you also really like 10. Would you say that's your second favorite Final Fantasy? Yeah, that's a hard one, right? Because there were so many other good ones, like Four in Japan 2 here mm-hmm. was an excellent game as well. Seven was really good. I enjoyed 10 more than seven, but 10 is probably my second favorite. But I don't think that's purely on like the merits of the game. I think it's more of like where it landed at its point in time for what gaming was at that point in time and what they delivered on the PS2. Yeah. So then what about the voice acting? So 10, I obviously love the voice acting. What are you looking at? We were just worried you guys might have gone crazy. I think it was pretty solid across the board. For its era, I realize it's not going to compare to a modern game that has the bigger budget and all this kind of stuff. And whose fault is that? Not mine. It is mine, huh? So some notes I pointed out. Titus, our favorite character, overall sounded great. Definitely had changes in intonation during his speech. So like he, you know, he wasn't like monotone. You guys are smiling now, but not for long. He had a different way of speaking to his fans than he did to everyone else, which I thought was really cool. Because he had all these fans from playing Blitzball, the way he talked to his other friends and his party members was completely different than how he spoke to his fans, okay. right? Like, he knew that they loved him, and so he projected, like, this excitement and love for them. If I score a goal, I'll uh, do this. That will mean it was for you, okay? But then when he would turn around and talk to, like, his own party members and friends it was like just like a normal conversation like he wasn't carrying that same attitude you don't look so good what happened you beat me up remember Aron loved him too super reserved and flat again a lot like Arden Ultima similar vein very monotone very flat but like very assured of himself you'll see for yourself come with me Kamari, right? This was the best in the whole game. Kamari? Because he didn't actually say a single word. Then I must prove my strength. I have a Kamari. Fig- I have all the figurines, yeah. but Kamari's one of the ones that's actually out of the box. Lulu, she was okay, but it seemed like they were trying really hard 
to make her voice happen and that it wasn't within like the normal pitch of that voice actor. Like trying to talk too low? Yeah, like trying to reach that pitch that really wasn't native to her normal voice. Hmm. Okay. And so like it just... I wouldn't put it past the directors back then, so... Oh no, not at all. That's it. No more. Enough, Waka. Waka loved him too. Just the typical surfer dude like from Hawaii, right? They nailed it just like a little bit too on the nose, but it was okay. I'm Waka. Coach and captain of the Besaid Oryx, brother. Riku, I, I enjoyed from like the perspective of if you think about like the typical American view of what Kawaii would be in Japanese stuff, that's what she portrayed. So she did a pretty good job of it. Mm. Like, was her performance worthy of an award or something? No, right? It's not that, but you're also talking about a different era, yeah. right? She didn't seem too bad. Yeah. She wasn't too bad. There's something I want to tell you, but promise not to say anything. Hmm? No glaring either. That's kind of my rundown for 10. So again, for its era, I really enjoyed the voice acting. I think the thing with 10 for me is the story was just... You just love the story. It was similar in some ways to 16. There were definitely some like parallels there. Mm -hmm. But I think the difference is the ending, like that flipping of the script on you in 10 was something that people will never forget. Or forgive. <laughs> or forgive in some cases. But yeah, you can anticipate how I might feel about the ending, right? Oh, man. I was actually totally on board with the whole story, and then the ending, I was like, no. What? First of all, I was super confused, because I was, I was also younger, didn't get what right. was going on at the end. I was like, wait a minute, what? Second of all, no, bad. When Once I figured out what was happening. This is bad. Really bad. Anyway, we're not talking about the end of Ted for now, but... That's actually why I enjoyed it. I know. But you like all the bad endings just like you like all the bad movies. Like, what is there wrong you go. with you? But <laughs> the thing that was funny about Ten that I'll call out was that when I was going back to kind of re-listen to the cutscenes, I fell down this YouTube rabbit hole of watching younger people than us... Oh, <laughs> play the game? Playing it for the first time. And what do they think? And watching the endings. They probably think it sucks. I don't want to ruin it for you. <laughs> you should go watch it. Like I fell down the rabbit hole watching this because I remember when I got to the ending the first time, I was obviously blown away and I love the game. It's one of my favorites. But watching these younger people, so I'm saying like people in their 20s, who because remember this game is over 20 years yeah, old. 2001. Right. So these are people who are either born around when the game came out or after. Okay. Right. They're now in their 20s and they're playing this for the first time, just watching the endings, right? So these are usually streamers that are doing it, right? Mm -hmm. It is so good. Like these people are just being utterly destroyed by this ending. Like, I mean, crying, bawling. I'm talking emotionally broken by getting to the ending of this thing all across the board. Men, women didn't matter. And like, Every single comment in these threads is from people my age saying, I'm literally tearing up watching you experience this for the first time because I remember what it was like when I played it back in 2001. I'm glad that a new generation is experiencing it for the first time again, just all over the comments for all these videos. Interesting. Like that is how impactful of a game 10 is. It was definitely impactful. I will give you that. Right. I was sad at the ending, but then I was just really pissed off. Like, I was <laughs> not happy at all. It's heavy. So I won't give them that credit that many people will say that it's like, oh, it, it is heavy. But again, when you set up a... Never mind. I'm not even going to go into it. <laughs> I'll tell you what I think about the voice acting. The voice acting was superb. So... Yeah. When it comes to Final Fantasy X, because it was back in 2001, and it was the first voice acted Final Fantasy, at least in the main game of the series that I could find to add voice acting, right? And and I remember, like mm -hmm. you were saying, I just loved this game. I played the sequel, X2 or 10-2 or whatever, where- Oh, the one where you dress them up? Yuna becomes a pop star and it's so stupid. I couldn't bring myself to tell them it was just an imposter. <laughs> I did not play that. So stupid. I will admit, I own it. I didn't play it. <laughs> yeah, so I actually played it, beat it, had a really good time. I remember really enjoying the game, even though I thought the story was ridiculous. I wonder what this awesome sphere is like. 
Well, it's definitely awesome. <laughs> it will be, won't it? So I was a big fan of 10. I was a big fan. And at the time, I was pretty young, and I hadn't given a real thought to voice acting. I didn't know a ton about mm -hmm. how good or how bad it was. I didn't even care, right? Who cares? I don't think most people cared about the voice acting back then. And it's probably a good thing, because I'm going to be honest with you, if you go back and you watch the cutscenes, the voice acting is pretty terrible. <laughs> Nothing but a bunch of low-down tricksters, eh? Yeah, 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 yeah! I liked it. If you compare it to today's standard as a craft. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, in comparison, there's no comparison. But it's more hilarious. <laughs> At that point in time, for what they had, I liked it. It worked. Uh, no, that's ridiculous. No way. I don't believe you. But it is the truth. You'll see for yourself. Come with me. If I say no? Every story must have an ending. I don't care about your stories! It worked for that point in time. It's actually kind of a... I think it was one of the first big franchise games to really have that much voice acting in it. If I remember right, it was novel for at least mm -hmm. us. And I do have to say, though, even though if you look back and it doesn't hold up in terms of, like, skill level <laughs> for voice acting, in my opinion, right? I, I well, it's nothing really. I, I just, uh, um, uh, I have to also say the caveat of I guarantee that the process of recording English dubbing was not conducive to being able mm -hmm. to give a good acting performance back then. I mean, they probably literally put the actor in a small glass room with a microphone, with a script of lines. Probably, I don't even know if the lines had context behind them. They literally could have just been lines. So they wouldn't even know what they were trying to say. And they probably, mm -hmm. as the actor, they probably just went through each line mechanically with some intern probably telling them how fast or how slow to say each line rather than you know letting them get into character or placing themselves psychologically within a scene let alone being able to listen and react to another actor there's no way they had any of these luxuries right and to me the result is hilarious and and titus or titus however you want to say his name he's so sonic the hedgehog or ninja turtle to me and this qualifies as just fine dressing up like it's halloween every night risking the safety of our family i mean come on what were you thinking but that really works for his character and i do love that they made him like an optimist whereas all the male characters in final fantasy the leads are such emo like mm -hmm. grumpy gooses we can all fly there yeah, everyone can go. Then we'll have a big party at my place. And he was like an optimist. Of course, they still kill him off in the end. But whatever. Spoiler alert. Well, they didn't kill him whatever. off. But that's a different. Uh, to me. That's a different. Uh, he doesn't end up with Yuna, which is what you want the whole game. And it doesn't matter. I'm not going to go there because we know how long I can talk about endings I don't like. Right. And then when it comes to like Waka, Riku, Yuna, Lulu, all of them, they were all endearing enough looking mm -hmm. back, right? As long as you don't judge the voice acting by today's standards, because it really wouldn't be fair to judge the acting. Yeah, it's not. By today's not. standards, unless you're in the mood for a laugh. <laughs> because I mean, honestly, if the actors in Final Fantasy X were really super talented, which a lot of them probably are, I'm not sure we'd ever be able to even know it. Mm -mm. Just by the way this game was made, by the process, right? And then the guy who plays Titus, I think his name is, I looked it up, James Arnold Taylor. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. His resume since doing that role is massive. It's massive. Tons of video games and cartoons. I mean, this role really launched his career, and I'm sure that his voice performances are more representative of his talents today in his more recent work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought so too, my lord. But when your people are facing the likelihood of being cannon fodder, what do you think you know comes into question? But it did enough for him to really kickstart his acting career. And I mean, this is Totally unfair, but if you take a scene from 10 and you play it next to a scene from 16, it's clear that we've come quite a long way. Your bloodline runs through the Oriflam gutter, from a whore who weighed her child's worth in gill. Have you threatened my father? 
<laughs> of course not. I merely whispered in his ear. What's with that guy? Kimari Ronso, of the Ronso tribe. He's learned the fiend's way of fighting. That's not what I meant. He's another Yuna's guardian. Huh? <laughs> Sometimes we don't understand him either. But you also got to contend with the fact that like the technology back, not I'm not talking about like the in-studio technology, the technology to transpose that onto a DVD oh. that had to fit on a disc in yeah. a PlayStation 2, right? Like, yep. it's just a different world entirely. Lots of constraints. But yeah, when we cover that one and we talk about the ending, you and I will have an interesting conversation for that. Yeah, I'm excited to play it again, actually. It's been so long. I think the, this is one of those that, like, you can only experience it for the first time. Once. The first time. Yeah. Going back and playing it again, yes, I'm going to love it. I know that. But, like, I already know the ending. Right. It's not going to be, like, the complete shell shock it was playing it back in 2001. Oh, thank goodness. Maybe I'll enjoy it more. Yeah. Well, that's Final Fantasy X, right? It had a big impact. And I mean, there's other games in the series that we mm -hmm. could mention that have voice acting. Like there's Crisis Core. If we pull this off, we'll all be heroes. At the very least, I'd feel like one. Dirge of Cerberus. I'm the one who should apologize. Or even the film Advent Children, which is fully voiced, right? I swore that I would never forget. Kingsglaive. Kingsglaive was pretty good, actually, in the voice acting department, I would say. You've disobeyed a direct order to retreat. For hearth and home, right, sir? As long as I got strength in my body, I obey that order. There's also, like, the Final Fantasy XIII sequels. Who would be insane and stupid enough to do that? Or X2, right? Excuse me, her name's Yuna, and she's a gullwing? I think it's safe to say that aside from a few characters here and there, most of the acting in these early games was just decent enough to forward the plot at very most. <laughs> okay, you don't agree with that. Yeah, I mean, so I think the voice acting has steadily improved over time. Like if you yeah. go from 10 to 16, it's gotten better, right? I don't feel that any one of those stages from like 10 to 12, 13 to, well, I didn't play 14, but like 15 and 16, I don't think there's been like a dramatic cliff drop on any of them. It seems odd to have gone silent in 11, but right, it was because it was in development longer than 10 since it was an MMO. And the thing is, because it was an MMO, the cost of voice acting that must have seemed, at least in those days, astronomical. Probably. Right? Yeah. Versus now it's probably like just part of the assumed cost. So that's probably another reason they didn't go at, uh, after that's it. That's probably true. Well, because you had the initial upfront cost and then you knew you were going to be releasing all these expansion right. so you knew the cost of the voice acting was just going to be millions and millions and millions of dollars right well and it's still been under negotiation how actors in these video games should be paid right because right. they're paid differently than people who voice like a cartoon episode or a film right right i don't know exactly how that is i just know that they've been trying to figure that out over the last couple decades all of that has to get ironed out 16 was definitely the strongest so far right and I know that for a long time, we've been talking, like as gamers, we've been talking about this as the dream where the game is actually a movie and we're just part of it. Yes. Right. We're getting to direct what happens in the movie and all this stuff. And I know we're not quite there, but 16 is like the first one to kind of pierce that veil. And when you start thinking about the fact like AI is kind of becoming so pervasive now and all these things, you can easily see a time where like the things that would, from a voice acting perspective, that would concern a studio, like how do we match up? English language versus Japanese language with the movements of the mouths, right? So you're talking about like the mocap and stuff. There will be a point where that won't even matter because with AI, we can render the entire scene and AI can render the face in real time. Right. Right. So that's coming in the future. So that's not going to be a concern for these studios anymore, right? Yeah. And then the last parting thought on a voice acting is I would really love to see a, a Final Fantasy VI remake for obvious reasons. Like, I think it's that's coming. my favorite game. I feel like it is. We're in the era of remakes because people don't want to come up with new ideas and everybody loves nostalgia and they know that people will play it. I think six is coming. Nine was announced. Did you hear about that? Yeah, I heard about that. And the problem is this. Like, again, if I go back and think about one, two, three, which is really one, four, and six, right? And then I think about seven. And of course, there were others in Japan got that we didn't, right? But these are like the mainline US ones. And I think about all those. Square is going to sandbag six. I guarantee it. Because they know that that is the one of one through six. That is the best one. Which it should be because it was the last one. Mm -hmm. 
and that one has the most fans. And so I know that they're going to release everything else remade and six is going to be the last one. It's very possible. They're going to do that. I think that's very possible. They're going to sandbag that one because they know that that's their ace in the hole. Like, mm-hmm. And in one way, I'm kind of okay with that because seven is where they started, right? Because seven was like mega popular. But if you give them all this runway to figure all this out, then theoretically, six remake should be a banger. It should be like oh, yeah. just off the walls. Awesome. So I mean, good things come to those who wait. So if we're just patient, you know, I want to see that opera like oh man, done with real opera performers. I did see it yes. with real opera performers live in a in a concert hall in LA a couple of years ago and it was amazing. But yeah, so did I. I would love to see that in my living room in front of my TV in a game that's like modern day graphics. I would love to see an organist doing Dancing Mad live yeah, in the game. that'd be cool. Like, that would be insane. But yeah, bringing Kefka Palazzo into the modern day, that's another reason I think they're going to sandbag it because that is going to be hard and they can't screw that up. Yep. If you mess that up, the fans are going to revolt. There's high expectations for that, for sure. Right. So that's what I want to see Like, is the evolution of the voice acting. It would honestly be amazing if that veil that we're talking about piercing where it's like we're in a movie and just playing along with it. If that was six, that they finally land on it there, that would be just like the best thing that I could ever ask for from the series. I could die happy after that. (laughs) I totally believe that you would. Coming from somebody who has a a Kefka poster on your wall. That's right. And a lot of people would side with you on that for sure. Yeah, I think you're right. I think that the voice acting has gotten better and better. I loved it in 16. I encourage Final Fantasy creative teams to record the English first. <laughs> <laughs> of course, we're a little bit biased on that. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? That's not very fair to everybody else. But it was just so much better for a Western audience. But I also want them to get the ending right for a Western audience, too. So that's neither here nor there. But I do love the voice acting in 16. And while like Aerith's performance in Final Fantasy VII Remake was hit and miss for me. This place... It has a kind of power. I would still say that it was worlds better than the performance attributed to her character in Crisis Core. I planted some outside my house, too. (laughs) Which was a few years before that. And there's quite a difference. So there's definitely an evolution happening. And I approve of the evolution. Mm. And with that said... That's going to do it for this episode of the Final Fantasy Files. If you enjoyed what you heard, subscribe to us where you get your podcasts, including on YouTube where you can see the video version. You can also see the video version on Spotify Podcasts. And leave us a review on Apple Podcasts as well. Don't forget, we have a website, finalfantasyfiles.com. We also have a subreddit, r slash Final Fantasy Files. I think that's what it I, is. I think it's what it would be called. Oh, look, I'm not a Reddit expert, okay? I'll, just, I'll admit that. Also. You can follow us on Instagram and threads under Final Fantasy Files. That's right. And you can leave a comment or a question on YouTube. And if you leave us a comment, we might even discuss it on the air. I could see us do an entire episode just reading comments. If we could get more than like my mom to comment. (laughs) Absolutely. And with that, walk tall, my friends. And may the flames painted on the hood (laughs) of a WS6 Ram Air Firebird Trans Am (laughs) rumble ever in your heart. That's pretty good. You like prepared that one. There's did you No, actually I just thought of that one on the fly right now. Did you really? It was so like articulate. (laughs)